happening as well. Yeah. So Good. it's benefiting more. So um, tonight, you know, it's it feels a little different than the last time we met. You know, we were, I think it was April 14th, you said. We were with you on uh, last time. And last time we were deep in the middle of the pandemic and everyone was staying at home. Um, it was very, very interesting time. And we're starting to come out of out of the, the lockdown. Yeah. Uh, now the last two or three weeks, uh, you know, America is facing a whole different challenge. Um, you know, with the racial uh, justice things going on, the protests in every city of this country, um, it, it's been it's been amazing. So uh, it sounds to me like God is intervening in 2020 in a certain way, or needs to intervene <laughs> to help us out of this. So I'd love to for us to chat a little bit about the topic of intercession. Um, yeah. I'm thinking of how we're in you know in in a big pandemic, and we're going through so much uh, pain that people are feeling in terms of the race. Um, the racial injustices, you know, on both sides of the discussion, there's, there's a lot of uh, energy, um, but it feels like we need to talk about intercession for a moment. Yeah. What is intercession? You want to start? Okay. Intercession, I would say, is an expression of prayer, but it's not just an expression of prayer where you're just coming to God and asking God for something. It's like takes it to a deeper level. It's something that often God puts on your heart concerning a person or a matter or a situation. And it like, um, uh, it like in a sense, grabs hold of your heart to some degree. Yeah. And it calls you to really start to press in and pray mm. and bring it before the Lord. Mm. So that would be different to where we're just going to come and pray with. There's nothing wrong with just praying, but intercession is a, a it's like the Holy Spirit grabbing hold of your heart in the depth and a width concerning a person or situation. And you can sometimes be a wow in that posture of intercession. You can sometimes uh, um, be some days, not necessarily that you're praying for days, but it doesn't leave you for days. It just weighs on you and weighs on you, if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. It's something that just doesn't lift off you, even though you bring it before the Lord, but there'll come a time where he will lift it off you. Okay. So, um, all right, so let's contrast that in terms of uh, uh, with prayer. Okay. How, let, let's let's uh, show the difference, how, how it yes. is praying, like we should all pray, never yeah. And, and intercession. Let's just flesh that out a little bit more. Okay, so I could be praying. So we had a prayer meeting, and the topic we're praying for is uh, our neighbors that are unsaved. Okay, and we're bringing them before the Lord or whatever the case is. And then while we're doing that, some neighbor really, God really grabs my heart concerning a person. Yeah. And though the, we're moving on to something else as a group, this won't leave me. Okay. There's something that God has really grabbed. And so, and the Bible says Christ intercedes for us all yeah. the time. Yeah. So you know, there's a crying out from the Lord Jesus before the Father for his people. Yeah. And that's what the Bible says. And it's not just a, a prayer. And I don't want to say just because it sounds like I'm undermining prayer. I'm right. not undermining right. prayer in any form. But I, the best way I can describe it, there's a depth and a breadth to it. Okay. That's the best way I can describe it. So there's just, yeah. And sometimes you don't even know what to say. Yeah. And so you just start to groan. Um, you can do that. Or you just start to pray in tongues. Yeah. That's what Romans 8 is about. Uh, just, yeah, you just start to pray in tongues. Because you're not too sure what to pray for the situation. But you know, you just got to bring it before the Father. Okay. Okay. So I hope that's helping you understand it. Maybe you can yeah. add to it. Yeah. I, I, I want to I make sure I even understand it probably, so I'll keep asking in a few more okay. different ways. Does, does intercession uh, feel like it comes with more of a burden on your heart? I would say so. I okay. would say so. Definitely. There's okay. more of an intensity. 
Yeah. But we have to get intense, but more of any, you pick up more of an intensity from the father, not that the mm -hmm. father's intense, it's not at all, mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? But you pick up the uh, burden, I don't want to use burden because it sounds a negative yeah. word. Right. Uh, yeah, the urgency or the whatever, yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. You know, I would also say, um, you know, often a time when we come to pray, uh -huh. uh, either as a group or individually and everything, we start off in a sense in the natural. Um, you start off, you know what you want to pray for, and you've asked the Lord to help you and to lead you by his spirit, but you start off praying for what you know needs prayer. I know I do. I will come and I'll say, okay, I'm going to be praying for the church today. I'm going to be praying for my family today or something like whatever the case may be. And you start off praying, but you've asked the Lord to lead you by the Spirit. And it's like sometimes as you're praying, and you're praying, and you're praying, um, hopefully led by the Holy Spirit. You, you're endeavoring to pray led by the Holy Spirit. Let the Spirit yeah. of God pray within you. Yeah. But suddenly, um, this thing comes in you, and you know... It's like, it's like gripped your heart, as Ken says. And it's like the Holy Spirit won't allow you to move. Yeah. Okay. Move you on. Yeah. And it's like, you know, okay, I've got to be praying for this. And you don't quite even know how to pray for it. And that to me is actually secondary. Okay. Secondary is that because it's the heart of God that you've connected with in this matter. And the how to pray to me is secondary. Okay. Um, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. No problem. No problem. Um, and so, because because it's like the heart of God has connected you to something, so you're praying in a flow with God that is really deep. Yeah. And sometimes that can come in different forms. Yeah. So for instance, I um was praying the other day and. Um, I've been praying Carry on. for my sister. Now, this is obviously a personal prayer. She isn't walking with the Lord at all. And mm. um, I've been praying for her and praying for her and praying for her. And it just it just came upon me so strongly to pray mm. for her, which happens periodically, but not every time I pray for her. Yeah. I feel this like yeah. death and weight of the prayer. Yeah. But I didn't know how to pray. Because, you know, when you've prayed for somebody for years, yeah. you've prayed every prayer you know. <laughs> right. I don't yeah. know how to pray for her. Yeah. So I prayed in tongues okay. and I prayed, but I knew that I knew you can feel it when you're in intercession. Yeah. You can feel the weight of it and you can feel that you're connecting and you're praying as the Lord wants you to pray. Yeah. I yeah. prayed in tongues and then I actually started praising over her. Hmm. And um, as I was doing that, I felt in my heart and I feel it's all connected to intercession. I felt in my heart, I saw like a. Um, like if you imagine a path and if you can imagine yourself walking along and clearing the things out of the way yes. just clearing a path and yes. i felt the lord speak mm -hmm. about just that that as i was praying and as i was praising over her in god and thanking god for her but thanking god for what he's going to do and what he is doing and everything i just felt the path be cleared the yeah. path be cleared. now i think she's a lot of clearing okay <laughs> so, <laughs> but and obviously this is a confidential she but she won't know anyway because she doesn't know anybody that you know but the following week now this is somebody who really has walked away from the lord the mm. following week on our zoom call i saw her name come up wow. at our church preach and i never mentioned it to her because i know she will not listen to another one then yeah but um that hasn't happened so. in 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 years Wow. So you pray that deep intercession and it seems like it's a, it's almost like a computer. You know, if you're like me, you have hundreds of screens open on your laptop. Probably none of you do that. Yeah, no, it's I a have, mess. It's a mess. I have all of them open, but one is in the front. Yeah. One comes to the front and it's almost intercession. It's like the Lord brings that one to the yeah. front, to the yeah. forefront of your heart and what he's doing yeah. in you and through you at that time. Yeah. I'll read the scripture. This is what it says in Romans 8. Okay. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, 
The Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans and words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because yeah. the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. Yeah. Wonderful scripture. Yeah. Romans 8, uh, 23 down to 27. Yeah. So it's like God's captivated you for a person, an event, a situation. Yeah. And it's not for you to pray in a way, well, I'll, I'll cover a little bit of justice later because justice comes into it. And it's yeah. very important that we understand what will be called justice. Very, very okay. important. Yeah. So I'll touch that later. Okay. But yeah, you just pick up the heart of God for something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I feel like I, I'm asking these questions uh, around the topic of intercession as as we have been you know especially in the early days of of covid and and lockdown we're seeing far more uh people and churches re-engaging in prayer again yes yes i agree uh, which i love like yes. fantastic Isn't that it, wonderful yeah it's coming back but but i part of me wonders and maybe correct me here if if i'm thinking about the wrong way that that is intercession a a, a deeper level yes. of urgency yes I agree. The season demands it yes i agree it is a deeper level of urgency yeah but that's what i say it's not just prayer but it sounds when i say that it sounds like i'm undermining prayer i'm not at all yes exactly. it's a deeper level of urgency yeah. so i call it it comes with a bit of width and depth okay yeah i term it that's how it comes with you. yeah and and I, I I feel like, and I'll give you a chance for a question in a moment. Um, I feel like this is the uh, the cry of my heart for us to not just go back to normal um, after lockdown, after yeah. all those things left. Right. Like, yeah, God's God's drawn our attention to prayer again as a church and as people. Yes. So we can celebrate everything's good, but there's still so much to be done. And, yes. and how do we call the church and ourselves to yes. a deeper level of prayer, yes. deeper level of intercession, yes. you know? I agree. I feel like intercession is something that is initiated by the Spirit of God. Okay. You know, sometimes you come to a prayer meeting, you don't even feel like being there, but yeah. you just want to pray because yeah. you know it's the right thing to do. And yeah. when you leave there, you feel a lot better, but you know what I mean? Yeah. So you've got to push, push, push through a bit. You've got to uh, get rid of the tightness or, or uh, you know, I don't even know why I arrived. But, I mean, we all go through that. But it's just right that we come and pray together because we encourage one another. Yeah. But this is not one of those times. This is those times where it's like initiated by the Holy Spirit upon right. you, right. or in you, or whatever word you want to use. Yeah. And so it just has a depth and a breadth to it. But yeah. having said that, you can position yourself for God to do that. Yeah, you can. If you're not in a position of prayer and you're running around and shopping and doing everything and you haven't got time to pray, um, I'm not saying the Holy Spirit can't. He can, but the, uh, we might not hear that prompting. Right. Okay. So if you spend time in a daily way praying or you, you meet as a church and pray on a regular basis, there's an avenue, it's a conduit for, for, yes. for us to position ourselves for God to captivate our hearts. That's good. That Concerning something. That's good, yeah. yeah. Okay. Very good. You a, do you have a question? No. Okay. So um, it, it, maybe you guys have been around church for a long time. Uh, there's there's always the thinking that oh there's a there's the old lady who's the who's the intercessor. Um, how do you, how do you spot how do you how does someone even listening or watching this later um, know whether they are called to be an intercessor, or is everyone? I think everyone is, but it feels like some people have a prompting on the from the heart of God more often than others. Okay. Just, just, just through church history, you see that happen yeah. in people you know, whatever the case is. Yeah. Um, Charles Finney. People don't know this, but there was a guy called Father Nash. He wasn't Catholic. They just gave him the nickname Father Nash. He had led a couple of churches in upstate New York, which had been at a failure, in actual fact. Hmm. And then he went to one of Finney's meetings, and God captivated this guy's heart, Father Nash, to pray for Finney. Okay. So he got introduced to Finney and they became quite good friends. 
And what he would do is he would go ahead of where Funny was going to do some meetings because yeah. he knew his schedule and he would go two or three weeks ahead, find a home in that area, in that neighborhood, just knock on doors, find a home and say, do you mind if we go live in your basement? And they would say, no, no problem. And he would go into the basement. He wouldn't come out for three weeks. He wouldn't come out the basement for three weeks. Yeah. And funny after seven years later, he died. His father Nash, and about two months yeah. after he died, Finney stopped his revival meetings. Wow. Because he said Father Nash was key to those revival yeah. meetings. How many people know that? And if you read Finney's account of it, Finney attribute um, gives him so much credit yeah. for what yeah. happened in the revivals. And so intercession is a bit of an unseen ministry. Okay. Yeah. I okay. do think that part of the reason people have this image of an older lady who prays is because I really do think this. my mother was one of those. Uh -huh. she, she would intercede for us like we were doing youth retreats and okay. people taking youth and everything. And we, I'd say to my mom, listen, we're going to go on this youth retreat. Can you please pray? She'd say, sure. Then I'd phone her. I'd say, mom, um, has the Lord spoken? Has he said anything? She'd say, not yet, but don't worry, I'm praying. And then someday, sometimes she'd phone me before we left and she'd say, I no longer need to pray. It's done. God is going to move. Huh. You could take it to the bank. Wow. Other times she would say, No, it's not done yet. And I'd phone her from the retreat. I'd say, Mom, are you praying? She said, Yes, it hasn't broken through yet, but I'm praying. And wow. then she'd phone me and she'd say, It's done. And wow. then she knew that night, not once in all the time that my mom interceded yeah. for us, when she said it was done, it was done and God moved in power. They did a survey among some churches a couple of years ago in America. Yeah. They took, I don't know how many churches it was. I don't know if it was 50 or 100. And they looked at what people would consider successful churches. And they went and found out what they did, why they were successful. And of all the churches, there was only one common denominator, one. They had intercession teams praying for that church. Wow. It was the only common denominator. Wow. But, so coming back to why I think that, I think some people... I think because intercession is such a behind the scenes kind of ministry and everything, yeah. people don't always understand it. So yeah. it's not a ministry that's kind of embraced easily. Yeah. And yeah. I think sometimes a lot of dying to self has to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Being, yeah. being something of an older community. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people have died. Having said that, I know of some young people that yeah. really need to see. Yeah. There's yeah. a book called Reese Hell Intercessor. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Whoa. If okay. you want to be challenged, read that book. If you don't want to be challenged, don't read it. That's a book. <laughs> there's yeah. a, there's a, um, a lady in our church who um, had a, a ladies group, a ladies life group. Um, and one night as she was praying for it, because it was going to be the next night, she found herself for hours that yeah. night from like yeah. you know 11 till 2, 3 in the morning, yeah. Yeah. praying in her living room and on a specific chair. Yeah. Just praying, praying, praying right. until she said, okay, I don't need to pray anymore. Yeah. The next night, someone came and gave their heart to Jesus sitting yeah. on that chair. Yeah. That's intercession. Okay. That is. Leonard Ravenhill. Also, <laughs> sorry, there's another book by a guy called Pray and Hide. Amazing. Pray, pray, pray and Hide. No, yeah. Just Pray and Hide. His last okay. name was Hide. His last name oh, was okay. Hyde. Pray and Hyde. 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 called Pray and Hide. Oh, I see. Okay. It's not a thick book. It's a, it's a maze. That guy. Amazing. Y-D-E-S. Yeah. H-Y-D-E, -E, yeah. Yeah. Leonard Ravenhill, not many people know this, but when he led a church up in New York State, yeah. New York City, there were many times that he would pray on Saturday night from 6 p.m. to 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Wow. And then when he went to church on the Sunday, there were people lined around the block waiting to come in. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You need that. Yeah, I tell you. Boy. You need that. But it's not something you can manufacture. That's the yeah. whole point. Yeah. It's not something that man can say, I'm going to do that. Yeah. It's something where God grabs hold of man. Yeah. And he gets him on his knees and he starts to pray. <laughs> yeah, that's the and different it's, decision. It's not a, um, this is from my understanding, right? It's not a um, fluff easy, in like you said, the, you know, everybody's got attention on you. Um, it, uh, make me feel good 
kind of thing. No, no, no you it's you it. pouring out yeah. to God. It's you laboring yeah. in it. It's you're carrying something. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it requires a lot. It does. Michelle's right. It's an unseen ministry. It's an unseen yeah. ministry. But it's so, it's, it's one of those, like, baby, yeah. we need it. The foundations of the yeah. church. I firmly believe that one day when we get to heaven, and you know, when you see all these mansions, and we're going to think it's that guy or that guy, and we're going to go and find it some of these maybe ladies that were in India or China <laughs> or Bangladesh. Yeah. That's the, the yeah. 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 Oh, but, man. You know, I think that, um, I think that God is also, um, he's not doing a new thing in that it's not new. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. God is complete. So it's not like a new, new thing, but I think intercession um, at one stage was seen as um, like a lot of the weeping and that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think God's broadened that a lot. Okay. Um, I've seen a lot of intercession through praise. Okay. Um, I know of people that have actually prayed, praised and praised and praised over a situation and um, basically a whole community has turned. Yeah, they've just, and they've done, it's a form they've of intercession. praise yeah. over the situation. Wow. Okay. Um, so I think intercession, we can't lock it in. I think there was a season in the life of church where, um, church corporate, where intercession was this heavy burden. And I'm not saying it, it doesn't come like that at times. Right. But right. I think there's been a, a there's been um, God has shown us different avenues, and I also think sometimes it's um, sometimes it's it, it's quite powerful. But sometimes it, for many years it has been unseen. But sometimes I think it includes the prophetic. Yeah. Because yeah. as you're praying, you um you're picking up the heart of God and you're praying into being what right. God is saying. So there's a prophetic element to intercession very often. Yeah. Um, I have a friend uh, in South Africa, a dear friend who whose husband is not saved. And she was saved. And I noticed she really had an incredible heart for intercession. And the one day I felt the Lord give me a word and said that she's going to travel to the nations for God. And she laughed. She said, how will I ever go? She said, my husband won't even like doesn't even want me to go to a family retreat anyway yeah. um what actually happened was she was coming out to america to see her sister and while she was here she asked she said to him she wants to come and see us so she did because we had moved here by that stage and she came to see us and um she knew she was coming for something to do with intercession she was coming you know she was coming because the lord had asked her to come here well, his business improved so much while she was away. And when she went back, God spoke his language. And every time she went on a trip to pray, even just for a short while, his business would improve. So wow. now he's at the stage, still not a believer, but he'll say to her, you know, I think you should go on a trip. Wow. I'll pray for you. And if you want to take a friend, take a friend. But I think it's time you go on a trip. And it's linked to his business. And God has been faithful. That's amazing. But yeah. she has she has prayed in so many nations, done prayer walks in yeah. nations all over the world. Yeah. And it's just so powerful just mm -hmm. even to walk the streets and pray mm -hmm. when God's given you that heart. Oh, so mm -hmm. good. I I just as you're talking, I, I get this impression. We um we're so quick to with the problems that we have to go to the self-help books and the how-to books. You know, how do I fix this situation? How do I fix that situation? How do I do this? I I wonder if there's not way more need for us as a, a people to get into that level of praying over the situations that we need yeah. to see how yeah. we get the out to from the Lord, you know, the supernatural. Often, often at time, God wants to bring a change. Yeah. Yeah. So it can affect there. You know, yeah. yeah, no, you're quite right. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Of uh, course, he does have the answers, but he wants us to come aside. Yeah. Yeah. Learn. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. How, do, how can we, um, other than like talking about it as we are now, how can we stir up uh, more intercession in a church? How, how I think there that? needs to be, uh, get hold of some books and read some books. Okay. Like book on praying hide. Even Andrew's mother, Mary's book on intercession and prayer. Brilliant books. Uh, any book on prayer by E.M. Bounds, 
So hold on. I'm, I'm putting it here on Facebook. <laughs> Praying Hide is one. Another yeah. one is uh, the yeah. Intercessor. Yeah, Intercessor, Resell. Uh, what about that Sheets' book, Intercessor? That Sheets is good, is very good as oh, well. Hold on. I can only type so fast. <laughs> Come on. Uh, okay. Come on. What are you doing? All right. Then, what's the third one? Any book by E.M. Bounds on Pray. E.M. Is Bound. it B O U N D S? Yeah, B O U N D S. Correct. Okay. And, and um, uh, Benny Johnson, she wrote a book called The Happy Intercessor. Very good. Uh, Benny Johnson wrote a book, The Happy Intercessor. Okay. It's quite yeah. a good book. Michelle's read it. Okay. I think I'm going to get that from. Yeah. Me? And then I think just to begin to talk on prayer, but not in a way as a duty. Yeah. There's a way that something God captivates your heart towards. Yeah, yeah. And that's what's got to happen. It's got to be a stirring from within and not seeing it as a duty, not seeing yeah. it as this religious thing I've got to do. That's it's good. God. But as you talk on it and as people read some of these books, something begins to stir in people. Yeah. And that's what happened to me. Yeah. And then you want to pray. Yeah. But another thing, um, and going along with who you are, Dave, um, because we know that you're a gifted worship leader, and so your church carries something of that worship that um, it just comes through. It's, it's, you've built that into the foundation because it's part of who you are and it's part of the life of the church. And very often, if you had, if you had like a prayer meeting and you had, you start off with some real, I think what I call, high praise, whatever you want to call yeah, it, yeah. Basic praise, and then move into that worship. Yeah. But, if you had to arrange with people that you believe have some form of intercession gifting mm -hmm. or, or whatever you want to call it, um, and you decide on, you know, you just feel together where God wants to take you. And out of that worship, you flow in and out of the worship and let yeah. one of them take, um, take the intercession into an area mm. and then flow back into worship and then let somebody else come and take an intercession into worship. It's a good yeah. way of training um, people. Because what happens is you come into the presence of God. The spirit of God is already leading you <coughs> to come into that place and then you're praying from that yeah. place. Yeah. It's a powerful it's a way to get it into is, it. Yeah. yeah. Good. Love it. Do that. That's but some good not. practical things. I, I yeah. really appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, no, nothing. All my questions, they're just answering. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, Kathy, you're so okay. For those, uh, for those people, we are on a Zoom call, but we are broadcasting this on Facebook Live. Uh, if, if you have any questions and you want it answered, uh, write about anything about anything. Kenny and Michelle know literally, literally everything. <laughs> Dave. Uh, then uh, just type your question here and we'll read it out and, uh, and put that into the discussion for you. Sure. Uh, Ken and Michelle, uh, another area that there, there are so many areas you guys are so anointed in. Uh, okay. but another area is, is the one of the prophetic. And we talked about the prophetic a little bit last time yes. uh, on our Wednesday Night Live. And as a church, we're doing... Um, Oh my goodness, is it growing in the prophetic? No, yeah, no. Graham Cook. No, not Graham Cook. Um, yeah. No. Oh, oh Chris Valentin. Chris Valentin. Oh, uh, yeah, he's got a book on the prophetic, yeah. Yeah, but we're actually doing the eight or the, the eight week um, course on it. Course on it, yeah. 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 It's a bunch of manual, yeah. 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 But anyway, carry on. Yeah. I'm just saying that's what we're doing as a church too. Yeah. So, I mean, even last time, I think we were on Instagram last time, you were starting to just throw out prophetic words like it was, you know. <laughs> nothing oh, yeah, and goodness. such accurate words that you were giving people it was was phenomenal we we want to continue to grow in that so we are you know doing the course as a church uh you know a lot of people on on saturday mornings doing that um do you here's a question do you feel in the type of I, i'm going to call it end times that we're in you know whether we're in the the end time or yeah. heading up to the we're end time we're always getting closer uh, we are. do you feel the need for a true prophetic voice or prophetic voices is getting more and more urgent in this time yeah i think so i think you'll see more people rise up in the office of a prophet yes which is different to the gift of prophecy Yes. Um, so, yeah, I do think you'll see the heart of that. More people in the office of a prophet, accountable people. Yeah. Just people that 
call themselves a prophet, but they're accountable to nobody. Right. Yeah. That's right. easy to do. Just throw out prophecies, but there's no accountability. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, uh, yeah. That's easy. But people that are accountable, and I feel like God's going to raise up more of that. The church, by and large, are a prophetic people. Yeah. They yeah. should be. Yes. Because you are looking down the corridor of time for what's coming. Yeah. If you understand what I'm saying. Right, right. And so you're living for eternity, although you're living here on earth, but you're living for eternity. Yeah. And so the decisions you're making are from an eternal perspective, yeah. not so much from a temporal perspective. Mm. And that's prophetic in nature. Sure. So it's like the Bible says you call things that are not as though they are. Yeah. And so you're living from you're living with that perspective in mind as a Christian all the time. Right. In a sense of that um, things we cannot see, but we are hoping for, believing for the promises that were given, we haven't seen. So that's a propheticness in a sense. Yeah. So we continually position ourselves to walk into the fullness that Christ has won on the Calvary for us. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's just a propheticness in itself. Yeah. Yeah. The church should be prophetic. It should. Yeah. Okay. But I do think I do think as Ken says that we're gonna see God raise up more of the um like the Ephesians yeah. prophet. Yeah. yeah. But I also think that God's gonna um raise up he is raising up and it's gonna increase the culture of the prophetic. Yeah. So yeah. you know, so if you just for example, you're praying for your neighbor. Mm. Now we all have, we can all ask God for the gift of prophecy. Yeah. Say, Lord, what can I do or say to encourage that neighbor? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you go in with a prophetic edge. You go in, you're praying for the children's church. Father, mm. what is it we can do this week? Give me some example or something I can do. You don't even have to label it prophetic. Yeah. Nobody even has to know, but it comes from the Father. Yeah. So, to, so that culture of the prophetic, I think, is increasing in the church, and I think it needs to. Yeah. 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 Without a doubt. Um, with with churches and, and church groups being more distributed, I think, than they used to be, right? Less uh, den as denominations are kind of getting flattening out and more exactly. independent churches going. Um, how do you think true prophets or that office of the prophet will be recognized if if we're so dispersed in, in terms of networking and so forth? Yeah, Dave, uh, that's a good question. I trust because everything for me should come out of the local church. Yes. Yes. So even God raising up the prophetic office or the Ephesians yeah. should be birthed out of the local church. Okay. So people know who this person is. They begin to yeah. recognize. Yeah. They know his family. They know his lifestyle. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. There's an accountability, but you see God doing something. Yeah. And something that's emerging within this person. And it's a process. To be walking to the office of a prophet doesn't happen overnight. It's a process. You know that. And it's a process of just dying to self. That's basically yeah. what it is. Yeah. So and, and it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be prophetic in what you declare. It could be even as a lifestyle. It could be uh, you're modeling something, if you understand yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it's right through. You can't box it into one category but i think it all should come through the local church i really do and i think that that's a safety net in that we have a young girl in our church who is not an ephesian for profit at this point in time because she's got a lot of growing to do not in an unkind way she comes from a tough background and she's she's young in the lord so she's got a lot of growing to do no criticism whatsoever but if you had to release her now it would do her more harm than good yeah. But the will is unbelievably prophetic. Yeah, she just yeah. picks I mean, things up. Come and say to us, you know, I kind of think I had this word and it's like this page written out and it's literally from the throne room. It's yeah. like yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. So I've told her, so I when I see that in a local church, yeah. or then I if some then I go to those people afterwards if I have a relationship with them and try and help them and encourage them and say, listen, if you have something but you don't know what to do with it, bring it to me. Okay. Now, when it doesn't come through the local church and the person picks up that they're prophetic, then there's no filter. 
there's no protection. Yeah. Error yeah. can creep in, all sorts oh, of things also. will come. And then somebody in the world is listening to this person, hears what they have to say, um, picks up this which is right, and it's mixed in with a whole lot of junk because they haven't walked it through. Yeah. Yeah. They haven't grown mm -hmm. into it through the local church. So it doesn't yeah. mean that these people can't, uh, in a sense, down the road, God release them in some ministry, but there's still an accountability in a local church. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Now I was just, I mean, the whole, like you earlier, you mentioned about, you know, the, that, that, I mean, that, that whole, sorry, I've got a few questions in my head, you know, about the, the season and we needing, we needing people that can hear from God because there yeah. is just so many voices that mm -hmm. are being screened yeah. at us yeah. 25, 20, for, for you know 24 hours a day we and ourselves need to cultivate that mm. yes I agree right? you're quite um, right and also and the, the link between the intercessor and praying and the prophetic michelle you mentioned it mm. um could you give like what explain that a little bit like how do you mean with the prophetic and praying like how what you know how could we what do you mean by that exactly okay Let's take the hot topic at the moment, racism. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's a hot topic. It's a very real topic and it's raw. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of things. So we can go into a prayer meeting and say, we're going to pray about this. Okay. And that is good. And that is a good thing to do. But if what comes out of me is just what I'm feeling in my opinion, and then what comes out of you is what you're feeling in your opinion, uh -huh. and then what comes out of this person here is their feeling and their opinion. Actually, you're not really going anywhere. Yeah. Because yeah. you're not just really praying yourself. Pray me. Yeah. Okay. So if you come up and you spend time with the Lord, be it worship, be it whatever, and you get the heart of God and you say, God, how are you wanting us to pray? Yeah. And God says something to you. And as you said, the whole group witnesses with it because it's the spirit of God. Right. Okay. Are right. you praying together in unity? for something that's causing disunity, but you praying together on the aspect that God has centered you on. Yeah. That becomes a powerful, effective meeting of intercession and prayer because yeah. it's coupled with the prophetic because the heart of God and what he's wanting to say. In yeah. Him. Yeah. And okay. praying their opinions, which can be divisive. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Michelle, that is such a good way you described it, especially in this situation. You know, I... I think um, there's obviously a lot of people posting a lot of things right now, you know, on, on social media and they're like, don't just say, oh, I'll pray for you and then and move on, yeah, which yeah. I understand there's some action that we need to do and we need to get involved with this process. But I think people also say that because prayer has become, I'm going to come and repeat how I feel. Yes, I agree. Exactly. I agree. You know, instead I agree. of bringing the prophetic yeah. With the voice of the heart of God, with the intercessory burden of God into a corporate yeah. gathering. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. that's where this all connects, right? Yeah, no, I couldn't yeah. agree more. And the heart yeah. of God is always reconciliation, yes. redemption, grace, love, restoration. Yeah. yeah. So There's I a lot more. I've just mentioned those at the top of my head. I want yeah. to give you a powerful, powerful testimony mm. into this very area. Okay. Um, in I don't know what year it was, probably the Go Festival. 1988. In 1988, there was a Go Festival. That was a YWAM run thing. YWAM yeah. sent out, I don't know if you went. Yeah. YWAM sent a group of people over to South Africa and they held yeah. it um, in, in Durban and they had it hold, held a Go Festival. And we had a whole lot of people preaching and everything. And there was a lady there, sure. Joy Dawson, a known yeah. prophetic lady. And she felt God give her a word. <laughs> this was, this was um, 19, South Africa, 1988. 1988. So there was yeah. an apartheid in the country. Yeah. Okay. And she felt the word that she felt God give her was that um, people, there were about, was it 2006? It was about 2000 at the conference. Yeah, about that. About 2000 at the conference. She had a picture and, um, the picture of the, yeah, the yeah. picture was a you know in south africa in the farmlands in like a, the, the reservoirs the, the reservoirs they the concrete reservoirs walls yeah, of yeah, yeah. right right you know, 
and she saw this deer had come up to the concrete to get water. Yeah. No water coming out. And then she saw it crack, the wall crack, and water slowly started to come out and started, the deer had fallen over and water was falling into its mouth. So it was beginning to revive. Okay. But that was the picture she had. That was the picture. She said, God, okay, so if you're going to break open this wall and let the water representing God, yeah. Love of God, whatever, come into the people, how are you going to do it? And God said to her, at that, uh, at that particular festival for this specific, so it was, yeah, this isn't the, the answer to everything, this was for this thing. Um, that the people in the room at the conference were all to wash the feet across the racial barrier. Uh, hmm. Wow, and did that. That was powerful, it was unbelievably powerful. Within, I mean, that was 1988. How long was it after that before the government changed and different Nelson people Mandela came in out. and then yeah. Nelson Mandela came out? It was yeah. like literally from that time we started seeing the crack of the wall. Yeah, yeah Mandela was released in 90, I believe. Yeah, in yeah. 90. Yeah. From 1988 to then, we actually saw the wall crack. Wow. Hmm. You had to find somebody you didn't know that was a different color to you. Wow. And wash their feet. It was unbelievably powerful. That's it. That just go wash their feet. Just go serve them. Of the prophetic yeah. of a nation breaking yeah. racism, not completely obviously, but breaking that apartheid mm -hmm. stronghold yeah. over an entire nation. Wow. One of the and things. it was one of the things I know it wasn't, but honestly, I could literally from that day you could see, you would hear yeah. in the news. Yeah. What are we? God are weeping. So God much are weeping. that thing. Right. Through that prophetic action and that prophetic picture. And yeah. that's always stuck with me as an incredible thing because I saw it firsthand. That, that, that's good. Uh, I mean, that was such a, I remember that time. I was uh, 13. <laughs> <laughs> and, but um, it, it, to me, as we're looking for, as we're looking for answers, we're looking for ways right now as a church and as, yeah. as people to respond, um, I love all the practical things that people are putting online, you know, and, and that's great. Um, but there's this supernatural uh, power of God that comes when we don't just get together. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal your words for a long time, uh, Michelle. Um, but we don't just come and pray what we're feeling. You know, yeah. we come and we hear what God is saying and we pray that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's how things yeah. will, 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 will supernaturally change because... Yeah. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. No, it's not. Exactly. No, it's not against yeah. Blood. Yeah. Dave, if I can, maybe I can use the segue. And if you've got questions, please stop me. No, we're good. Keep going. Justice is a big thing on the heart of God. Yeah. 550 times the word justice is mentioned in the Bible. Yeah. And Psalm 89 says the foundation, uh, righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Love. Hmm. And righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne, and love and faithfulness go before him. That's what wow. it says. Wow. So righteousness and justice. Where's that, that again? Psalm 89, 14, I think oh, it is. Okay. okay. I'm going to write and that there's, down. A, there's a couple of, twice where it says that. So justice is such a big thing on the heart of God. Then in Luke chapter 18, Jesus talks about prayer. Mm. And he tells a parable. Luke 11, Luke 18. Luke 11, he tells a parable about prayer. Luke 18, he tells a parable about prayer. But this parable is about this woman that went to the unrighteous judge and batched the door down. And he wouldn't hear her, but she didn't give up. Yeah, she didn't give right, up. Right. And eventually she said, let me just answer this woman, even though I don't believe in God. But let me, that's what he's, the parable, <laughs> Jesus said in the parable. Let me go see what this woman wants and give her what she wants. And then Jesus said, will not the Father in heaven grant justice, justice to those that cry out to him day and night? Even wow. though there's a delay, but he'll cry out. Wow. So it's the only parable just about that Jesus uses where he uses a courtroom situation. He uses an accuser. He uses a judge. All right? Yeah. Now we've got to understand, 2,000 years ago, there was a judgment made. Mm. on the principalities, powers, and authorities. Jesus overcame. That was a judgment that was made. It yeah. was a judgment that was came down through the corridors of heaven. You're with me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So when we go to God and we've been unjustly dealt with, maybe it comes through people, because it often comes through people, but it's not trying to get justice back on the people. You go before God and you say, God, I'm crying out day and night for justice. Mm -hmm. Then we leave the justice in the hands of the Lord. Mm -hmm. We leave how he chooses to deal with it when he chooses to deal with it. But then it's in the hands of the Lord. And the Bible says he will grant us justice. Mm -hmm. But when we come before him, we got to make sure we're innocent before him. Yeah. In other words, there's no unforgiveness. We're yeah. not coming for retribution or revenge. Do you understand what I'm saying? We cry. You got to read that parable. It's an amazing scripture. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all about prayer and coming before God for justice yeah. to be merited. That's a good one. Yeah, and God will grant justice because he says he will. Yeah. But we are not it's not for revenge. It's not retaliation. It's God will give the justice in the way he knows it needs to come. Yeah. When you've been unjustly treated or unjustly something's taken from you that's not right, that's yours in actual fact. Yeah. Or you've been unjustly dealt with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that kind of persistent praying yes. uh, day and night. Yes. We, are we back at intercession? Yes, that's what begins to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Yeah. <sighs> if you want to get a good teaching on it, go to John Paul Jackson. Okay. Yeah. The mystery of justice. It's called the mystery of justice. It's a powerful okay. teaching. Get it on YouTube. That's where oh. I got it from. Yeah. Good. good. So good. <laughs> well, uh, believe it or not, we're almost at an hour. Oh my. Uh, <laughs> no, you're no i love it that that's it's perfect that, that's what we need in this season yeah, yeah we desperately need it in this that is what we need in this season yeah. a, a church to to knock at the door of the lord like yeah. that Amen. and we and want to thank you we we love you guys we love your church we honestly do we do we uh, appreciate you guys, and uh, as soon as we start meeting again, we're having you back. It's always a privilege, always yeah. a privilege, and so we thank you. We thank yeah. you. Will well, you guys pray for us and pray for our church? Of course, we will. Okay, do you want to start, and or do you want me to start, and you finish? Okay, how do you want to do it? Okay, why didn't you start, and I'll finish? Father, I just lift up this incredible church, Lord Jesus. Father, from the day that church started lord and i know that it was in your mind to do lord jesus it has just brought such life and such it's just been such a fun church and it's just brought life your life into so many people's lives lord jesus i want to thank you for a day for kathy lord jesus and their obedience and for every person that has joined that church lord jesus and brought who they are and their giftings and they who they are to the life of that church jesus yeah. And I thank you for the impact that they're making in their city and in the nation and beyond, Lord Jesus. And I know that this is only the beginning. Mm. Father, I just want to pray your blessing over them. I want to pray, Father, that even as they've prayed, Lord Jesus, that they will make a difference, not only in the nation, but in situations. Mm. Even things that are complicated, like what we're all facing at the moment, Lord. Let this church make a difference. Let that difference, let them impact the people around them and the people in their nation, Lord Jesus. I pray, Father, that through this church, Lord Jesus, we would see things strategically changing. Yeah. Because they're connecting to your heart and your will, Lord. Yeah. Let them always be a people that follow after you and go after yeah. you with all their hearts. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Father, well, I thank you for 614. I believe in my heart this was a planting of your hand, a real planting of the hand, of your hand for the display of your splendor. Mm. So I thank you for every person that you've called to be part of it. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for your incredible, precious promises over this group of people. Thank you for your leaders in this church. Thank you for those that have just stood shoulder to shoulder with one another just to do what you've called them to do. And then, Father, I just want to read the scripture over them. The Lord, you will always, the Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. 
your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up age old foundations. You will be called the repairer of broken walls, the restorer of streets with dwellings. And so Father, I just declare the scripture over these people. Continue to give them wisdom and insight. Continue Father to let them know that you're leading them and guiding them. And I thank you. I thank you, you go before and you prepare the way and you say, come walk this way, come walk this way. So I pray blessing upon them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Ken and Michelle. Yeah. Can I say something before you go? Just as Ken was praying, I just was reminded that, um, you know, God speaks about generations and we just serve the purposes of God in our generation. Yeah. And I love that you guys are so teachable and that you learn from those gone before you. I love that. Um, but I feel that God is giving you specific things that you haven't learned from those that have gone before you because it is for your generation. You yeah. can learn the truths behind it. Yeah. But there's going to be fresh revelation for the season that you are in. And I feel that even your kids, and Connie in particular, I feel that um, you must hear some of the things he's saying. Even although he might not be able to express them fully to you, and he might not even know the prophetic edge, just observe your kids. Not only your kids, the kids in your church I'm talking about. Yeah. But um, observe them and see those threads that are coming through. That will be something that they will grow for their generation. Yeah. When you look back, the beauty of getting to our age is, is the things you can look back and you can see with clarity because you've seen the fulfillment of it. Yeah. Clayton had a revelation of grace when he was seven years old. I did not know that then. Yeah. But I know it now. It's one of his life's revelations. It started when he was seven. Wow. And that kept coming through. In little way he also hated injustice those two things are the things that came through from his childhood uh -huh. so when it comes to children look at that look at your children what are those little threads that keep it getting repeated that they keep saying it it might even come in the wrong way uh -huh. <laughs> it doesn't even mean it's going to come in the nice polite yes that's saith the lord kind of way it's just like this is a fair. <laughs> but they go on and on about it <laughs> What are those things coming through? So for you guys, what is it God's got you in for now? And for the for the children, and as yeah. I said, you guys as a church and you the next generation. Good. Thank you. Uh, Ken, someone asked on Facebook, what was that scripture you read? Isaiah 58. Okay. I'll give you the exact verses. Isaiah 58 from verse, um, halfway through verse 10 through to verse 12. Great. Perfect. Thank Great. you. Love you guys so much. Yeah. Back to your people, eh? We'll have you here soon. Yes. Promise. Yeah, we love we will love coming. So all right. Thank you. Thanks for the privilege of tonight. Of yeah, course. Thank, thank you, you for your time. You're welcome. Anytime. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.